Penny from Kid Vision, and I'm thrilled to meet you. It's so nice to meet you, Miss Penny. I'm Teodi Anderson from A Dog's Best Friend, and this is Finian. He is a 13-year-old Papillon. Papillon is the French word for butterfly, and his ears look like butterflies, and that's how they got their breed name. He's very sweet. He's a retired therapy dog. Oh, he's beautiful. And you're a dog trainer. Yes, I am. How did you get into dog training? The way I got started, I wanted to do pet therapy with my dogs, and that's when you have a dog that you train to go into hospitals and nursing homes and schools and make people happy. And I didn't have a dog that was good at that. They have to be really, really comfortable with people. They have to love everybody, and they have to be really well trained. And at the time, I wasn't a dog trainer. I didn't know how to train dogs. I adopted a three-legged Labrador. He was in an accident, and he lost his leg, and he ran around just fine, but he loved everybody. He was wonderful. So I started training him. We used to work with people in rehabilitation hospitals, and those are hospitals where people go when they've had accidents, or maybe they've hurt their arm, or maybe they've lost a limb, and they loved him because they felt like he was one of them. What type of training did you have to go through to become a dog trainer? So when I first started many years ago, there weren't a lot of schools on how to become a dog trainer. I had to read lots of books and watch videotapes and study on my own, but as dogs become more and more members of our family and more and more people get dogs, and as scientists learn more about dogs, there's become more schools so that people can go to school now to become a dog trainer. Are there different styles of training? Yes, there's lots of different types of training out there. There's lots of different ways to get behavior. We are big fans of positive reinforcement. We want to reward dogs for doing good things. We don't have to bully our dogs to make them do what we want them to do. They're our friends and we don't want to do that. You want to be nice to your dog. So whenever Finian does something right, he gets a treat. And so he does a lot of things right because he really likes his treats. How do you get started with a dog training? It it depends. It depends on what exactly the problem is the person's calling us for. We'll go into a house, perhaps the dog is jumping on grandma or getting on the couch or stealing food off the counter, chasing the children. And so we start with that and we work with the dog. But we also have to work with the people because there are things that people do that make dogs very naughty. We're also training the dog owner. Some of it involves how to teach your dog to sit or how to teach him to lie down or how to teach him to stop jumping on grandma. But some of it is on how to be a good pet owner. For example, well, Finian has really big ears, and sometimes we have to check those ears for infections or seeing if, if make sure that his ears are healthy. We have to teach people how to be good pet owners as well. It's not just fun and games. When you first get a puppy, you think, I'm going to teach him all these tricks, and he's going to roll over, and he's going to high five, and it's going to be fun, and I'll walk him every day. But puppies are messy. Puppies get into trouble. It is a lot of work owning a puppy, and it is a big responsibility. Could you teach us how to be a responsible pet owner? Absolutely. I'm happy to show you that. Great. Let's talk about being a responsible pet owner. Well, it's not just fun and games. We do like to teach them tricks and we like to teach them good manners, but you also have to learn how to take care of your pet. This is Rosie. She's seven years old and she's a Yorkshire Terrier. And some dogs don't like being touched anywhere. They don't like it when you touch their paws or they don't like it when you look in their ears. So one of the things that we teach owners is to help their dogs learn to be handled. And Rosie's really good at this. You can do anything to this little girl. She's very easy to handle. You can look at her feet and make sure that all her toes are okay. It's hard to find them in all this fur sometimes. She likes her belly rub. And this is what we want for every dog. So what we do is we might brush them a little bit. And we'll brush really. And you wanna be careful when you do that. You don't wanna yank just like our hair. You don't wanna yank your hair. You wanna make sure that you're doing really easy. And then, good girl, she gets a cookie for that. Good girl. And then we're gonna brush a little more. So you just start a little at a time. Exactly. If you try to brush this whole dog, first of all, it takes a long time with Rosie. That's not as much fun, and then everybody gets frustrated, and the dog starts crying, and you might start crying. But she'll do anything for cheese. She's doing really good. Would you like to try? Sure. OK, so here's Rosie. Rosie, Hi, this Rosie. is Miss Penny. Hi, Rosie. And here's your brush. I'm going to give you just a little brush. Oh, you're so pretty. And now we have Clover with us. She's a five-month-old golden doodle puppy. And I'm gonna show you how to teach dogs to take medication. Sometimes they get sick and we need to take care of them. And sometimes they may need pills or liquid medication. Adults should be the only ones touching medication, whether it's for kids or for pets. Never try to give medication to your pet by yourself. 
So what we do is we might hide it in a piece of cheese. Then she takes it right down. Other times, they may need liquid medication. And so this is not actually medication because she's not sick, but this is for purposes we're gonna use some beef broth to train her with. So what we do is we hold her here and we lift her mouth a little bit. You have to get through all the fluff. We tuck this in the side and we just go really slow. Yeah. She likes it. She does. Was that good? So she is really good about taking medication. And luckily Clover's not sick, she's absolutely healthy. But should she get sick, she's ready to take her meds like the veterinarian tells her to. Oh, that's wonderful. Because I know so many people struggle with giving their animals medication. It's nice to be prepared and to have some techniques for that. Yes, and you want to try when they're puppies, but it's never too late to train a dog. So if you have an older dog that needs medication, you can start with the peanut butter and some, some baby food. It has to be a treat that they love. This is Sawyer, he's a 10-year-old Belgian Tavirin. And when Sawyer was a puppy, he did not like having his nails done. It was really hard for him. A lot of dogs don't like it. Whenever you reach for their paw, they pull it away. And so I worked really hard to train him to like having his nails done. With Sawyer, I like to use a Dremel. And this files the nail down so you don't have to clip it. And so sometimes this can be a little extra scary to dogs because it's noisy and it also does the nail. Sawyer, good boy. <laughs> so he'll give me a paw. It's like getting a Good manicure. Boy. It's just like getting a manicure, exactly. How do you get a dog to get to this <laughs> point where they're comfortable? Dogs don't always do what we want them to do, so we have to have lots of patience with them. And so what I did at first was I would just run this and he would get a treat and I would run it and make the noise and get a treat. And then eventually I just did one nail and give him a treat and then we would end for the day. And by the time I got to all the nails, it was fine. It was just a while. So now I can do all of them and he's much better. As you can see, he's a lot more relaxed about having his nails done. So being a responsible pet owner is really important, but it's also important to teach your dog manners so that they're easier to live with. Like teaching children manners. Yes, exactly. <laughs> can you show us how to teach dogs good manners? Sure. Great. So one of the most important things you can teach your dog is to sit. Sit is just good manners. This is Chewbacca. He is a five-month-old Cavapoo. That's half Cavalier, half Poodle. And we're gonna teach him to sit. So, Chewy, I have a treat in my hand, and I'm gonna slowly go, yes, good boy, over his head. And he's got leaves all down. And how do you teach dogs not to jump on people? First thing is you're gonna teach the sit. This is where it really comes in handy. So, what I want you to do is, I'm gonna let Chewbacca come over to you, but I only want you to pet him when he sits. If okay. he gets up, you're gonna stop petting him. Okay. okay? Chewy, come over here. Sit. Good boy. Now you can pet him. Oh, rolling over counts. That's uh, fine. He's good with he's belly a rubs. Good boy. Yeah, and good see if he's boy. rolling over for a belly rub, he's not jumping on you. Right. And that's just good manners. It is good manners. You have a boy. So sweet. Look at you. What type of behaviors are good for dogs to learn so that they're good pets? Well, we teach them basic manners like coming when called, sit, lie down, stay, don't run out the front door. We do a lot of that. But some dogs need more advanced behaviors. If you have a dog that is helping somebody with disabilities, they may need to retrieve something like get money for them or pick up something off the floor. The other thing we do is we train tricks. Manners are important, but tricks are fun. Yeah. So sometimes we train just fun tricks for dogs, how to play dead, how to roll over. There's a variety of things you can do. Dogs can learn just about anything. Sometimes you meet a dog that's a stray, that's not attached to a person. It's really important that you don't go pet that dog because there's no one to ask if the dog is safe. So there's something that you can do to help keep you safe. What you don't want to do is run or yell because that's acting like a squirrel. And if you act like a squirrel, the dog's likely to chase you. So instead, we're going to be trees. So what we're going to do is trees plant their, their, limb, their trunks in the ground really strong. So you're going to lock yourself into the ground really strong. You're going to take your branches, wrap them around your body, and you look at the sun and pretend you're a tree. And you're really, really quiet. And then what's going to happen is you're really boring. And so the dog is going to sniff you for a while and hopefully just move on to something else. But if you run and scream and, and, and flail around, the dog is likely to chase you and you might get bitten. So we want to be perfectly safe and just be a tree and be perfectly still until an adult can come help you. Thank you so much, Teodi, for teaching us about being a good dog trainer. Oh, thank you for having me. It was wonderful. Thanks. And the dogs, too. Yes, the dogs were perfect.